did that entire deal, not for equity in the company, not for, uh, you know, some big royalty. I did all of that for 0.5% of sales. 0.5% of sales. Let's be real here. They took advantage of it. Welcome to Build with Rob. It is Rob Dyrdek. Uh Look, I'm going to say it right now. You are never too young to do absolutely anything. And you are certainly never too young to start a company. Okay, I, it's like, you know, there may be some debate that like, okay, uh, if you are um, three and a half years old, maybe you shouldn't because you can't speak yet and talk and walk very well. You know what I mean? But, but you know, if you're a teenager and you want to start a company, if you are, you know, someone that's still in high school, someone that's still in college, like how many stories do we need to hear of, of kids dropping out of college and making multi-billion dollar companies? You know, it's, it's in so many different industries and so many different sectors, you know, and, and, and the truth is, is, you know, developing and building a company is super complex. But if you have an amazing, smart idea, you have the wherewithal, the passion, the energy, the understanding, and the and the actual ambition, and the and you're willing to push through to try and bring something alive, like building a company, and and you are young. Your age should never be a limit. There is no age limit to entrepreneurialism, and that's the beauty of it. You know, there's not an age where you should or shouldn't start a company. If you have an idea and you believe you have the ability to bring that idea to life, I don't care how old you are, you should start that company and go for it because you're going to learn so much. You're going to build the foundation and knowledge base that you will carry with you for the rest of your life as you move on and build other companies if this first company you've decided to create does not work. That is the beauty of perpetually evolving and growing as an entrepreneur. You get to learn and get better and better, not just in the company you're running, but perhaps the company that will be your magnum opus in the future. You know, and, and for me, I obviously, you know, went through it on a lot of different levels. You know, I, I uh, started my first company uh, right after I turned 18 years old. Okay. And um, you know, it, it wasn't done in the traditional uh, way that you would you would build a company. I was already a professional skateboarder and I had a relationship with a company uh, that manufactured and distributed uh, skateboarding products, right? So it was easy for me to go to them and be like, hey, do you want to build this company together? And it, and it seemed no different to me. I didn't understand business well enough to know that like, wow, what an unfair advantage you got here, Rob. You uh, actually have a manufacturer and distributor Distributor, you are a pro skateboarder with pro skateboarder, uh, other professional skateboarder relationships, and you understand uh, the magazines and media and the distribution and the skate shops. Like, I didn't look at that as being anything other than like I wanted to create my very first company. And, and I had a lot of advantages going into it and, and really didn't understand how lucky I was to have a really great. Uh, manufacturer and operator to partner with. Uh, but again, I didn't know any better. I didn't know any better. I thought we were partnering and we're going to do this deal. And, you know, I didn't fully understand business. I just was like, I got to start a company. This is what I'm meant to do. And, and I set off on creating a company. And what I was able to create and pull off was was unprecedented at the time. Like no one had attempted to create a new truck company, the metal part at the bottom of the skateboard, for those that don't know anything about skateboarding, um, is called the truck. And so I had uh, did a deal with this manufacturer to create a new uh, line of trucks, right? And so now it's on me to like put the whole thing together if they handled the manufacturing and distribution. And now it's on me. And, and I didn't even think twice about it. I went to literally 
like the dream team of skateboarders, the absolute best skateboarders in the world. And I'm going to name a couple names and, and you're not going to like, most of you aren't going to know any of these names. And I want you uh, to, every time I name one of these names, you might as well be hearing Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, uh, Charles Barkley. That's what you should hear every time I name Kareem Campbell, Guy Mariano, Tom Penny, Jeff Rowley, Eric Costin. It's like, uh, I just named off the most elite group of professional skateboarders in the history of professional skateboarding. And I was able to go out and convince all of them to be on this new company with me. Right. And, and, you know, and again, it's, it's to that idea of wasn't about how old I was. It was about the ambition and the will and taking shots, like just going for it, you know, and I got them to all to commit. Then like I, it was on me to create the brand and, you know, at the time I was super heavily into conspiracies and I was reading a book called The Orion Mystery, which was essentially like a book about they created the pyramids because the pyramids were perfectly built to signal some planets in the Orion constellation where we were in communication with aliens. OK, and I believed it back then. I believed it. And I thought there was, a, a, in due time, those aliens were going to come down and they were going to love the fact that I named this uh, company Orion. Okay. And that was how I chose to name my very first company at 18 years old. I called it Orion Aluminum. I wanted to be different than all the other com truck companies that called themselves truck companies. Like, and the, the truck is made out of aluminum. I thought that would be unique and cool. And I hand sketched the logo. I hand sketched on a piece of like, you know, white regular notebook paper. I did a perfect little circle and drew a star right in the middle. And uh, the graphic designers from the company turned it into a logo and Orion Aluminum was born, right? And, it, you know, I never once thought about... Um, any aspect of my age having anything to do with my ability to put this entire deal together. And, and even though I was incredibly naive and didn't fully understand really the magnitude of what I had just done, I, I just pushed through and made it a reality. And, and that's the, the truth about doing anything. Now, what did I learn? I learned I didn't know nothing about business. That's the, this is what I learned because I did that entire deal, not for equity in the company, not for, uh, you know, some big royalty. I did all of that for 0.5% of sales, 0.5% of sales. Let's be real here. They took advantage of me. Okay, you're talking about a pro skateboarder went out and got the biggest collective of the biggest names in the history of sport to be on a single team, designed, conceptualized, named, brought together an entire vision for a brand new innovative company and did it all for 0.5% and never made any money, uh, you know, made a little bit of money, but never really made any significant money, uh, but, but. But check this out. Here, here's a handful of additional things I got from it. One, self-belief, right? What, what did I know more than anything is like, okay, you have the ability to, to organize pieces and put them together and create an actual uh, business. And I ultimately learned that um, when you take shots and, and, and ask a lot of times, uh, things can actually happen uh, for you and you can learn a lot along the way when you don't expect it, you know. And of course, a painful lesson is, you know, I've committed a lot of time and energy um, to creating a brand and then ultimately never saw the rewards off of it based off of the deal that I created. Uh, and that was due to a lack of experience and lack of understanding of even how to do a proper deal. Uh, but boy, I still... Uh, got to leave and have the story today, of course, to share uh, now 30. <laughs> I have it now to share 30 years later. It's really funny to me to think that like I would have 
built my first um, company 30 years ago. And, and it's, it's, it's remarkable, um, you know, when you stay committed to, to sort of a craft that is entrepreneurialism for 30 plus years, what you can evolve into and, and grow into over time, you know. Uh, and look, and, and today our, uh, we've got a young entrepreneur on our, our show. Um, uh, she created her own beverage brand. She had this vision when she was eight. Okay, she started putting it together uh, when she was a young teenager and ultimately launched it at 18 years old. And it, it, it's it's an incredible uh, story, and she's super impressive, but, but it is ultimately uh, the idea that you're never too young to have a great idea and to begin to build it because you're going to learn so much along the way that's invaluable to you as an entrepreneur um, for the rest of your life. Okay, look, per usual, uh, wherever you listen to the show, give us some likes, comments, interact. Uh, you want to learn more about the Deer Deck Machine and everything we're doing, go to DeerDeckMachine.com. Um, you know, uh, you want to be part of our consumer collaborators? Come on along. Become a machinist. Um, but without further ado, let's bring on this young superstar. Alana Andrews, welcome to Build with Rob. How are you? I'm doing incredible. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing really good. I can see right in front of you is, is your product, <laughs> your vision. <laughs> Please share with us uh, the vision that you have for Sway and what exactly it is. Of course, so Sway is the natural sports drink specifically designed for the Gen Z and for the modern athlete. Our vision is to grow Sway to become an instrument representing boundless ingenuity on a global scale to be more than just a beverage. Woo, man, look, she's t it's tight in there. It's like, let me give you this vision <laughs> nice and tight. Uh, yeah, and, and look, can, can you just tell the audience how old you are? Yes, I'm 18 years old. Yeah, it's look, it's impressive. Like, you know, to even to be this young and be able to like bring a product like this to life. We're talking formulation, finding a, a co-packer to bottle it and then actually design, bring it to life, market it, this whole thing. It's it's a pretty daunting task for, you know, even uh, the most seasoned of entrepreneurs. So doing it 18 years old in between going to college uh, is really impressive. Uh, please hit me with your your question and on as it relates to business of course well sway was was, was was developed for the gen z athlete when i was younger i was diagnosed as pre-diabetic and i needed to find a way to replenish without loads of sugar and to replenish naturally but not only were there a lack of natural beverages there was a huge lack of sports drink specifically designed for young athletes and so we really want to bring sway into the young athletic realm one of our questions is how do we truly appeal to the athletic realm? We've been able to, after our launch, we launched last year, we got incredible momentum and great media attention. But how would you suggest we really truly convert that into sales and into support towards play? Yeah. And let me ask you this. Do you primarily sell direct to consumer or do you have uh, distribution yet? Right now, it's primarily online on our website. Yeah, and, and look, I think if, if that's the case, then, then you've got to double down on swaying being a verb. You know what I mean? You've got to double down on like swaying is a way of life. Like let's not do it like our parents did it. Let's do it the healthy way, the better way. You know, it's like I think, you know, I, I know that you have your own like sort of initiatives as it, as it works, as it's related to philanthropy. But I, I think you bring cause in here. You know, I don't know if it's something in diabetes or something that that adds to this layer of impact that you're going to do when you find success. And then I think you you find somebody to help you um, turn swaying into a verb and then, I mean, get every single at Gen Z athlete you can find and send them a package of product and ask them to post TikToks, to post Instagram, to post anywhere that they can. Because at the end of the day, you're never going to spend or have the budget to spend a paid media. And even then it's gonna be really hard. Have you tried to do paid media yet? We have not. Everything has been earned media right now. Yeah, because it's like it's like paid is so difficult and so complex. And if you can get into an influencer program and and really allow that earned media to be your customer acquisition, but you gotta get creative. 
you got to go a step further, I think, than just the technical side of like, hey, uh, sugar-free fuel and sort of this is for Gen Z athletes. I think you got to get more fun. And when I say that, it's like, you know, um, you know, this is what a millennial looks like after a jog. <sighs> you know, this is what swaying looks like after a jog. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like those, right. okay, those sort of like unique ways of like making the value proposition and the quality feel like it's a by us for us that Gen Z does it better. Gen Z won't stand for it type of thing. You know, I just think you embody um, what the product delivers and why you created it in the first place. But I do think like your best bet is to find somebody that can help you come up with all these different creative ways to make swaying a verb and then implement like a deep influencer strategy of creative, engaging, fun, micro influencers that are athletes. And that's a beautiful way for you to, to, to get customers without spending money. Goals and guidance. Thank you so much. One Look of our that. main focuses this year is to bring Sway into the college level. So, so, so to really have these college athletes being the one and the voices behind Sway because it's made by Gen Z for Gen Z. And I completely agree. Really want to make that a forefront. Yeah. And, and look, you, you, another thing I think you should consider is like sell the dream college to college. And try to try to get into the college bookstores. You know what I mean? Like say, hey, this is a college student, like Gen Z, buy us for us. This is better. Like, you know, you could even potentially open up distribution beyond uh, just selling direct to consumer by doing these little mini partnerships with the places that distribute that. And think about this is go deep with the college, have the college athletes, and then find, you know, one or two convenience stores that are locally owned that are right by the college and, and distribute through them. You know, we had a, a brand of ours that had an alcohol beverage that did big programs on college campuses and then sold directly to the local liquor stores and 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 sold a ton of product because it was a one-for-one promote to this community and this is where they shop type of thing. So a couple other things for you to consider. Um, yes, that please. is exactly what we're currently working on too. <laughs> okay, great. Look, and you don't need, yeah. look, I know you're smart. I know you're smart from the way you articulate to how, how your entire thing works. Uh, I would love to hear the vision that you have for your life. Uh, and then hit me with your life question. Cause I, I have a feeling you have a pretty clear articulate life vision. <laughs> Well, I have many, many different ideas of what I, what industries I plan to tap into, but the main overall kind of common denominator and the common line of message is that I truly see myself empowering young minds and truly getting into entrepreneurship. I believe that entrepreneurship isn't so much as a, isn't so much a career as it is a skill set and a perspective. It is so important that we really teach this to these Gen Zers and to it really truly anyone. And so within that, I plan to take sway as an instrument on what can happen when you just jump, when you take that first step and when you just start. Then I want to go in and in, in to build a school as well to really teach these in the foundations. Hey, and, so and my question. Yeah, before really the was, question, before the question now, <laughs> how, who taught you? Where did you like learn? How did you develop the idea that I'm going to create this business? And then who helped you and guided yeah. you through as a, a deep, deep waters to even be able to navigate such a thing? Of course, as I'm sure you know, any startup, it definitely isn't an easy task, but it does take a village for sure. So when I was younger, as I mentioned, when I was eight years old, I was diagnosed as pre-diabetic. And I'm sure you can imagine, no kid really knows how to handle or how to process such daunting or better or, or, better, or better for worse life-changing news. I was scared, I was frightened, and frankly, I had no idea what diabetes meant, but I did not want to become this next victim. So I began working out all the time, I began playing tennis and track, and going to the stores, I would see no options for what I needed that wouldn't reverse my progress. I would see these four strings with sugar lace ingredients and chemically based foundations, and, were, and they weren't giving me what I needed. So fast forward hold up, years hold later- Hold up, hold up, hold on, hold on. <laughs> listen to me, listen to me. 
At 10 years old, at 10 years old, I just wasn't getting the Gatorade was not safe for me at 10 years old. And I said enough was enough. You know what I mean? Like that, the other part of it, the fact that it's like a 10 year journey to launch a business, which is so normal, only it's like eight to 18 is extraordinary. It's so, so much more, so much more inspiring and really funny. But, but who taught you, like, when did you even like, like get the skill set or the knowledge to be able to do that when you became a teenager? I definitely have to say that Google was my best friend. I call YouTube, YouTube University. So that really helped. But also I was within the Young Entrepreneurs Academy, a chapter in Loudoun County where I live. And they were able to train about 30 other teens and I how to build businesses and how to really become young entrepreneurs. And from there, I built a prototype of Sway. And then after graduating from the program, I just took it further. I reached out, everything was cold calls. I just reached out to people who had been successful in my industry and said, hey, this is what I'm doing. I would love to pick your brain. I would love your guidance. And they really helped guide me through this. It's, un it's unreal. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And, and again, it, that's why I love programs that teach entrepreneurialism at, at any level, especially young minds, because, you know, you, you get so much out of it. It lays the foundation uh, for an understanding that you can build a foundation off of to, to build mm -hmm. uh, your future, whatever that may be. So please uh, hit me with your life question. Of course. Well, with all of my passions combined, I really admire how you've been able to kind of form this harmonious lifestyle, been able to not having to sacrifice any of your dreams or any of your passions for what you want to pursue. How do you suggest that I kind of make my own system and my own version to doing that? As you mentioned, I do have an initiative that I work to build up confidence within young minds and I have sway. I want to build so many more companies as well. So kind of what's the system that you suggest in order to just optimize this and to automate it? And look, and, and also, if I'm not mistaken, you're at business school now? Yes, I'll be starting at Wharton this fall at UPenn. Yeah, you, you know, it, it's like when I think about all of that, um, as someone that just does so much, right? And uh, But they've, they've went through years and years of, of, of doing too much and getting overwhelmed and being burnt out and then overcorrecting and then doing more. And then, then like, Oh, why did I over even stop that? Oh, I got to do more. Then I burn out. Then it's like, Oh, I got to do this. Oh, this really worked. I'm going this direction now. It's like that chaos yeah. is, is, is the fire that I went through. And, and to me, it's why I preach to even someone like you of like seek harmony and balance and learn how to get really good at living life while achieving your dream. So when you do achieve a financial dream, a business dream, that at the same time, you're leading the fulfilling uh, life that you really ultimately are seeking through that business or through that venture. But, you know, w what I think for you is, you got to get really good at at understanding uh, how much time the things that you want to do are going to take, right? Like, because now if you're in school and it's like, oh, I'm going to do this influencer thing on Saturday, but like, oh, but I've got a, a test coming up like the following week, like, oh, I should be able to finish that project. No, no problem. What's going to happen is like, oh, no, that project's taking way more time. Now you've got to stop and go to this other event. Now you're stressed because you're thinking about the project and then you get that thing. Then you go back to it. Then it's not as good as you thought. Like if you don't get really good at being able to judge how much time and energy things are going to take from you as you're doing all of them, you're going to get overwhelmed. You know what I mean? And, and really, you know, we only like, like become stressed and begin to think like, oh, we're doing too much or, you know, whatever it may be um, when we get overwhelmed, right? Like I like to say, like, you are never doing too much unless you're overwhelmed. Right. Because every single person has the ability to compartmentalize and and keep their mind share in a bunch of different places at once and keep executing and be excited and have energy and love the entire process. And some people do two things and they get completely overwhelmed, you know, and and that's to each person individually. So you've got to master understanding your time and your capacity and not allow yourself to get overwhelmed so you can continue to evolve and grow and be a better business person, be a better person in general and enjoy the process of growing and evolving because that's what, what it's all about at the end of the day, you know?
Of course. Again, goals and guidance. Oh my goodness. That, yeah, that really man. True. Look, goals and guidance. Again, thank you so much. <laughs> goals. I just love the idea of you looking deep into someone's soul and they think that, like, I already think you're smarter than me. I already think that you're <laughs> smarter than I'll ever have the ability. I'm like, man, this, this young lady is going to like, like really change the world. Uh, it, but you're saying goals and guidance. I, I can see, I'm going to end up in your book in like 12 years <laughs> where like I learned compartmentalization and the power of never being overwhelmed from the build with Rob show back in 22 uh, is, is the vision that I can see. Well, look, I, I, I really, really enjoy the conversation. I, I've met a lot of entrepreneurs and young entrepreneurs and, and you truly are one of the more impressive individuals I have ever met in this space. And what you've already done is near impossible you know, and so I just want to implore that you continue to push forward, continue to grow and evolve. And, and for as, as, uh, un, what I would like to say, things are going to be kind of wild and unusual because you're going to be going through the next five, six years of incredible discovery. And at one point you'll really decide like, okay, no, this is what I'm really going to stand for. And this is going to be my mission. And, and it'll reveal itself to you over time. But I, I really think you got an incredible start. Uh, and I wish you the best of luck at school, best of luck with uh, with Sway and 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 keep Thank keep you. doing what you're doing. I truly appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for this incredible advice and guidance. OK, till we meet again. <laughs> be good. Yes. Right, have the best care. day. Thank you. Uh, wow. Wow. That is an impressive young lady. You know, I, I mean, really, really, I mean, it's it's like some people you speak to and you know, uh, without a doubt, they are going to be hugely successful in life and business. And, and you can hear it in her voice, the way she articulates her vision for her business and her life that she really, really, really is special. Um, you know, I feel honored to have her on the show right now as I think about it. I'm just like, man, like for real. Like, you know, 20 years from now, when she does that book, uh, she's going to have like a multi-billion dollar company, you know? So, um, but look, that's why I love the show. I love, I love talking about it. Love talking and, and speaking life and business with entrepreneurs. That's what we do. If you love the show, like, comment, wherever you listen to it or wherever you may watch it. And of course, whatever you're doing, man, see it. You know what I mean? Build a plan so you believe it. And do everything you can so you can do it. What is it? Till next time, see it, believe it, do it. <laughs>